Hello, my hand. It's your girl, Tori, indeed. And I have a very, very special guest, award-winning life coach, mental health advocate, author of Heal Forward, and a few others. Okay. <laughs> Purpose Taylor, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here with you this evening. Thank you so, so much. You're always welcome. I'm really excited because you are definitely a living example of breaking through obstacles, defeating obstacles, and currently dedicating your life by providing practical tools to navigate the necessary um, strategies through life, right? <laughs> so That's beautiful. Um, I like that. I like that. Oh, I just, that was my freestyle. <laughs> no, no, but that was, that was precise though. That's exactly what it is. Thank you. I know you're born in Dallas. Yes. You obtained your degree, your business degree from the University of Miami. Yes. You took the leap, moved all the way to New York City to pursue a career in entertainment. Yes. Which was pretty successful. I saw actor. You were featured in films <laughs> and you were even featured in commercials, print ads. During that time, you obviously gained more experience, obtained more wisdom. And that's when you ultimately came out with your first few books, right? Yes. Yes. And to fill in that gap, um, I actually was working at Def Jam Records as well. Ooh, I was nice. interning, interning, working. I was doing multiple things at one time. Sorry, somebody's FaceTiming me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I thought I had my Do Not Disturb thing on. But anyhow, I was working at Def Jam, and um, I was signed to Wilhelmina Models. And, uh, you know, I was in that world of entertainment. And then I had a conversation with my father that ended up being the last conversation I had with him. and. Um, and he died, unfortunately, of a heroin overdose. And But in that conversation, he, he prophesied to me the things that I'm doing today, which is so crazy because at the time, I never, ever thought I'd write a book or would ever want to write a book. And I wasn't interested in helping people to heal because I wanted to be famous. So I just wanted to fill in that gap, but I'm gonna let you continue. Wow, that was so uh, vulnerable of you. <laughs> Which we're going to get lit later on into the four of you. Yes. So I'm yes. going with that, right? Yes. <laughs> you found that your audience was geared to uh, young men of color. Yeah. With, yeah. It, you know, publishing your books. How was that experience for you? Did you feel like oh. that was me? Like it's geared to people that are like me? Yeah, you know, during that time, and, and so to fill in the gap even more. So when my father died, I went through like a deep depression um, for years. I was depressed for like deeply depressed. And in that time, I started to remember things that I had suppressed, like being bullied, like being emasculated, like being molested. Um, a lot of things that I just suppressed. And I wanted to find something. I wanted to find a way to deal with this in a healthy way because I didn't want to die, even though I was so depressed that it was around me, like the 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 spirit of death I felt was around me. I didn't necessarily want to die, but I necessarily didn't want to continue to live the way I was living, right. if that makes sense. And um, I started to think about my life. And during that time, I think Facebook had just started to come out. And someone I went to uh, junior high school with showed me a letter that I wrote to them when I was like 12 years old, encouraging them. And I was like, this is so crazy. Number one, that I said this stuff because it's a lot of the stuff I say today. And two, that they kept this letter. And I feel like it was it was a sign from God to be like, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. Wow. It was embedded in you without yeah. you knowing you know, what you went through. It's very intimate. So thank you for sharing that and for being that person to speak up and make a difference and having something so memorable and just sharing it with me and anyone viewing this. So that means a lot to me. So ultimately you end up getting your master's yes. from Columbia University yes. and um, really dedicated your life yeah. to this. You could have yeah. pursued acting, the, the modeling, all that because you were already in a road of to continued success. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I felt like this was more, this was more important. And this felt the most authentic to who I was. Right. To who I really was. Wanting to be famous and do all the modeling and acting, all this stuff like that. That was part of me, but it wasn't the purest part of me. That was that was because I was bullied and because people said I wouldn't be anything. So right. I wanted to prove people wrong. But this right here, this the work that I do today is from my my actual spirit, who I actually this am. is more of your calling. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's such a beautiful thing. Um, is it okay to say that you're also known as Dr. P? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. P. <laughs> you could have definitely gone to a different path. Absolutely. But you chose, even though you felt that depression or you know, death revolving around you, you chose a path that, whether it was in entertainment or ultimately doing what you do today, you chose a path not to go down the wrong alley, right? Yeah. Is that something you did naturally or something that you had to snap yourself out of? Like, no, I'm not going down like this. I think it was, I, one thing that I've always learned about myself is that I have a lot of resilience even as a kid, like even being bullied and made fun of and, and all those things, like I always bounce back, um, you know, being ridiculed and all those things like that. So I think being resilient was definitely something that I had to access during that time. And, and actually in my life currently, you know, you always have to be resilient, you know, cause we have setbacks and those things, but um, I definitely think the resilience was something that was innate within me, but it also, the other part was I had to learn how to like snap out of it and snap out of it, meaning that I had to go through whatever process I needed to go through to deal with this in a healthy way. Mental health is important throughout our entire mm -hmm. lives. Yes. So how would you describe mental health? So mental health is the relationship that you have with your thoughts, your emotions and the world around you. So that's, and it's all encompassing. So it's the all encompassing of your relationship with your thoughts, your emotions, and the world around you. And that includes people and that includes the environment. Okay. I want to quote you. <laughs> and I would like for you to break it down for us. So I hope I say it right. Healing, okay. I'm sorry. Healing isn't linear. It's continual. Yes. So I want to preface that by saying that we heal for the rest of our lives. If you've lost someone, right? If you lost someone near, to, you know, near and dear to your heart, the pain may not be as powerful as it was at the beginning when it initially happened. But as time goes on, the pain subsides. But there's still a pain there. Absolutely. There's still a longing for that for that person to be there. There's still a a, a place of missing them, a, a place of sorrow, just a tiny bit, even if it's just this much, but it's always there. And so that's what I mean by healing is it's not linear. Um, linear, we think, you know, you go from this process to this process, this process, this process. But as you know, if you lost someone or if you dealt with anything in life, it's like this. <laughs> right. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, it's like one day you're good. The next day you're a mess. You're good for a whole week, and then two weeks you're a man. You know what I mean? Like in dealing with things, and even if even in the physical sense of like if you break a bone, right? There's some days that you can you can move that broken arm, right? And you don't feel nothing. Some, days, some days it's excruciating, you know. And even before it fully fully heals, it's the dullest pain you've ever experienced in your life, right? So that's what I mean. Like healing isn't just this linear thing. It's it's very much this. And it's something that's going to be continued for the rest of your life. That makes sense. I quoted you because it made sense to me. Yeah. You know, I, I was like, I want him to break it down for us. At least something short and sweet like that has a, depth, a meaning that is in depth, right? Um, yeah. Since we've met, within your content, I've read that women heal with the future in mind. Yes. And then heal within the past. Yes. So yes. how could you explain that or or go into details with that? Well, think about this. Like um, a man is thinking about when he's really has an uh, awareness and when he when he's introspective, he's thinking about the things that he's done wrong and wants to fix those things, not 
realizing that there's still life left to be lived. Women heal for the next thing. So if you get over a heartbreak, you ready for the next man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Women heal with the future in mind. Women heal so that they can have a better future. Right. Men heal so that we can have a better past. That's so deep. So is that where the four V's come in? Yes. Okay. So the yes. four V's are, oh gosh, do I have to list them in order? Is there a particular order? Well, I like to list them in order the way that they're written in the book, but... So it's vision. Um, yes, verified. vision. Verified. Vulnerability. vulnerability. Oh, and um, wait, wait, no more. Vulnerability's last voice. Then voice. Vulnerability. Oh, okay. You were right. You're right. Okay, so those are the four V's, right? So yeah. could you go into a description and feel free to say it in the order again, just to clarify for anyone. Let's start with Dr. P. Uh, four V's. <laughs> well, Dr. P's four V's are vision, verified voice and vulnerability. The purpose of Heal Forward before I get into that is to teach men how to heal with the future in mind, to heal towards a life of flourishing, right? Not just getting by, but flourishing. Um, right. and, and the four V's are things that I'm using currently and have used to help my life to flourish. And so with that being said, you know, the first one is vision. You got to always be able to see what it is you want. Right. You have to be able to engage. I talk specifically in the book about imagination versus rumination. Imagination is the positive thing. Rumination is thinking about the negative thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, in order to have the vision, we have to be able to imagine the life that we want. Right. Um, so then the next one is verified. I talk about how we're especially in the social media age that we're in now. Everybody's looking to be verified. You know, I, I'm, I'm verified on social media platforms. But my whole thing is that we're all verified. The moment we come into this world, we all have a blue check, right? I love that. Right. Yeah, we all have a blue check. And so once we know that we have that blue check, then we can really start to live the life that we want to live. And we don't have to feel like we don't have to question our words or our value. We're verified for the life that we want. Voice, I talk about how... When you know your voice, you become empowered. When you don't know your voice, you become overpowered with the voices of others. Wow. Right? Impressive. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so voice, so when you are in tune with your voice, you're able to call things. You're able to declare things. You're, ever, you're able to say what is and what isn't. Manifestation considered? Yes. Within that category? Okay. Yeah. So that's able to. So within your voice, you're able to discover your power and able to say, I'm going to make it through this. And and to circle back to the original the original uh, conversation we had when I was in that depression, I did make a de declaration that said I will not deal with I will not be depressed another day. That's when I discovered my voice and literally all the all the symptoms of depression started to fall off my body. Because I had enough. And I was like, I was tired of being overpowered with the voices that I was hearing. And I was like, no, I want to hear my voice. Right? Um, and so the last one is vulnerability. Vulnerability being that you have to know that in order to have the life that you want, you have to be vulnerable enough for it to happen. Right? So if you want to have love, you have to be vulnerable to getting hurt. If you want to have success, you have to be vulnerable to having failure, right? To experience failure. But it, you have to engage in the risk, not to engage in the risk of vulnerability, but engage in the reward of vulnerability. We always think about the risk factor being that someone is going to hurt us or we're going to lose or we're going to be exposed. But the reward factor being that I'm going to get healed. I'm going to live the life that I want to live. I'm going to have the relationship that I want. So in order to have the life that we want, we have to be vulnerable. We have to take that risk um, in order to get the reward. Thank you. I really appreciate everything that you're mentioning. Although that your audience may majorly be the young men of color, it also can affect and help any reader in general. Yes, yes. absolutely. And that's what I wanted. I wanted... I wanted to write something specifically for men of color because I feel like there's not a there's a lot of conversation, but there's not a, enough application or solution towards that you know towards mental health crisis in men of color. But 
I wanted to also make something that anybody can pick up the book and their lives can be enriched because of it. So that was the task that I had at hand. Even though it is male centric, it's universal. Anybody right. can read the book and, That's and get on the path. Yeah. How much does one's lifestyle or mindset? Oh, I know that's kind of two different aspects, but how much does it play a role in our mental health? Well, you know, lifestyle influences a lot of things, right? If you live, um, you know, some people may live a very fast life, right? You know, if you live a fast life, then, you know, that affects how you see life. Everything affects how we see life. If you live a um, unhealthy life, like if you live a lifestyle of eating junk food, right? That affects how you see certain things, right? Absolutely. You know what I mean? So like everything plays an effect on everything. Mindset, but mindset, I think is kind of an, an offshoot of the lifestyle or vice versa, right? It kind of informs, they inform each other. Um, you know, how, you know, your mindset, how you see things and how you view the world makes, makes the difference. Um, and so, yeah, so I think really more more so like mindset, like because everything begins in your mind with the thought and high perspective, how you see things. Right. Um, you know, a simple I use this example when um, I was going when I was enrolling at Columbia, which is an Ivy League university. Right. And at the time, I don't know why, but I was like dead broke. I didn't even have money for my application fee. And a friend of mine was like. Yo, Purvis, you need to let them know who you are. Because I had achieved a lot of things even before going to Columbia. And she's like, you need to email them, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, they ended up waiving my, my fee and they gave me a scholarship, which they don't wow. give for master's degrees, especially at Columbia, right? Wow. Well, my perspective was, my perspective shift was, instead of saying I was broke and I was down and out, I didn't have, my perspective shift was I was so amazing that they waived my fee and gave me a scholarship. You see what I'm saying? Like one, even though both are true, I lead with the other one because I always want to lead. I always want to lead with the empowered perspective about my life. Congratulations. That's, that's amazing. No I matter try. what stage of your life, you can definitely move with one foot forward, right? Personally, yeah. I always check myself. Mm -hmm. And I always make sure, like, I literally ask myself, how are you feeling? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. What's going on? What do you want to achieve today? Like I literally ask myself these questions. So I check myself mm -hmm. every day. So right. what are some good ways that someone can check themselves or maybe address the person in the mirror? I mean, definitely what you just suggested is a great thing, like doing those self-check-ins and doing them every day. Because most of the times we don't check in with ourselves until it's like a 911, right? Uh, but as you, you know, I say, I like purpose, you good? <laughs> I like purpose. I, I I pray every morning. I pray to God. I wake up every morning. Then I'm like, "Are you good? How you feel? Body, knees? Because you know I'm in my forties now. You got to ask the knees. Are they working today? Like, <laughs> ask the elbows. Are they working today? But I mean, but you know, all jokes aside, you have to do those self check ins and really be honest with yourself. But I also think it's also being very descriptive and very in tune with what feels good for you. What does good feel like for you? Right. Because I think um, what's a good day for, for Tori may not be a good day for me. Right. And so you have to be very specific to you. What is a good day for you? What it, what what does good feel like for you? And I'm sure that there are some commonalities amongst all of us. Right. But there are certain things for us that make us feel good. Right. And yeah. so if you're not and even if life isn't going the way you want to go, you still you're still good. You know what I'm saying? But you have to know what that is specifically. And so I think doing those self check-ins are important. Also, I think it's important to have lifelines. You know, those people who right. are your spaces, people who you can talk to, who you can be vulnerable in front of, who you can be naked in front of emotionally, um, knowing who those people are. And then also knowing if you're, you know, knowing who your lifelines are, but also um, knowing routines and things that, that you can put in place that will make you feel good. So if that means making a playlist, if that means watching cartoons, if that, you know, eating, you know, eating at your favorite restaurant, like cooking certain foods, you know, cooking is very cathartic for a lot of people. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, it works. Whatever that thing is for you, <laughs> right. Whatever that thing is for you, like being able to like implement that and integrate that into your life. 
I guess that also answers how can someone improve their mental well-being. It all ties in together. It all ties in together. And I'm and I'm definitely pro therapist. Right. So definitely like, you know, there is there is people don't understand this, but there is a power. There is a healing in confessing. You know, only what you confess can be healed. And so, like, the reason why I think therapy is so powerful is because it's an exchange of words. And that and your healing is always in your words. So like when you know how to process, you start to respond differently. You start to use different language. You know what I mean? You start to find your voice. You know what I mean? So it's like it's a lot of things um, that therapy provides that are beneficial for us. So like definitely all those things I listed, also having a therapist, but also having community. Well, having a therapist doesn't mean that your life is upside down either. You know, anyone Correct. that... Um, has it all together, we're going to say, um, yeah. could have a therapist and have great mental well-being, mental health, you know, and it mm -hmm. could also be for someone who may need that extra support or those tools. So therapists, I know sometimes they're frowned upon, but no, you don't have to be going through something. You could be okay to have a therapist. Absolutely. Right? And it helps um, you to stay okay. <laughs> <laughs> How can someone who lacks support get support? There's so many resources and outlets out there for, for therapy. There's text therapy now. Like there's so many ways to get access to right. mental health services. Um, I definitely say find something that fits you. But I also will say don't don't be afraid of doing the the hard thing. The, the hardest thing to do is usually the right thing to do. Ask for help. Yeah. No. Ask for help, but also see the therapist in person. You know, I think some people want to do the text therapy because it's like it's a little less informal. And while I feel like there are some people who can open up via text, I think a lot of it is there's there's something to be said about the in person, you know, dynamic. And 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 so I would definitely say there's so many resources out there, um, free services actually, free good services. Um, but also, I would also say, like, look into, you know, support groups, look into communities that have lived experiences. Those things are just as powerful. Um, you know, exercise, having, um, you know, things that are positive. Like, you know, I always say healing is choosing the right thing that's going to yield fruit in your life for the life that you want. Right. So continue to choose positive things that are going to feed your soul to feed your future. Right. And so, like, though any anything that's encompassing that you know is healthy and good for you, then you need to do that. Oh, there you go. I definitely love the cover. And honestly, I feel, okay, so this is more of my spiritual side. I feel yeah. a lot of great energy in your picture, you of you yourself, not only the cover yeah. where it says heal forward. It's just like, oh, my God, I look forward to heal. I look forward to read this book. I look forward to know. What are these gems in here? And I know we've discussed a lot. And to this point, you just really, really gave us very important information, resourceful information. So I admire that. And I admire what you're doing and how you changed your career to your ultimate call. Heal Forward is a book. It's a it's a continuous. It's a continuation of a love letter that I began in my book before this one called Survival Mode. And it's a love letter for to black men's mental health, um, to us being able to flourish as human beings. Um, to be able to have a more enriched human experience, uh, to be who God called us to be. Um, I, I'm i so proud of this book because, because I, I'm healing forward. I'm on the journey with the reader. Right. So like, I'm on the journey with you. So I haven't arrived. I'm healing forward along with you. You know, not a lot of people can say that. There's many people that may say, oh, listen, I've been through it. I've gone through it. I'm healed. And now it's your turn. But no, you're actually experiencing it with the reader. That's very admirable. You Thank know, you. That you don't shy away from that. Thank I definitely you. have to read the book. I didn't get a chance to yet. Uh, but I did do some research and I'm like, okay, I'm definitely reading this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what you think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I actually have already a couple people in mind that I want them to see this interview. I want them to get to know you, to follow you, to read your books, to read this. Book. Is there any fun facts you want us to know about you? Like, do you love to cook? Um, I love to dance. I can dance really well. I love to dance. Oh my God, I'm so excited <laughs> that you said that. <laughs> I love to dance and I can dance really well. Oh, a 
Okay, any favorite uh, genres you love to dance to? Or um, actually, if you look on my Instagram page, there are a couple they videos. Post- like, yeah, my <laughs> Instagram profile. There's one video of me dancing to Afro beats, and then there's one. There's two of me dancing to Janet Jackson. Okay. Like I can do Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson choreography to a T. Oh, wait. Oh, oh my gosh. I I wish I would have had this footage. I would have put it on the screen. I might have to add it to the end. (laughs) Yeah, but you definitely got the dance moves. (laughs) Listen, I don't play no games. (laughs) I'm all for it. it. I definitely am all for it. (laughs) I don't play no games. Up to this point, I... I can tell you that that's very authentic. <laughs> that's an authentic statement. So I'll, I'll respect that. And um, yeah, thank you for paying it forward. Everything, everything you do, even the humor, the dancing, everything. You know, you're all around a great person. I appreciate your time. And I won't take up any more of your time because I think we could talk forever. Yes, I appreciate <laughs> it so much. This was awesome. Thank you. And I would love to come back on. Thank you. It's accountability for us both. <laughs> really.